Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Big update up in the great white north. Some brand new details on the war between the Hells Angels and the Rizzuto mob. Two guilty pleas have been entered by the uh, shooters in the attempted assassination of Leonardo Rizzuto, which really broke this whole war out into the open in the spring of 2023. Kevin Rosebrun and Steve Bartholomew have copped pleas. They were charged last summer. They were brought into custody within days or weeks of the March 15, 2023 attempt on Leonardo Rizzuto's life uh, in a high, on a highway in Laval. Survived it. Three uh, gunshot wounds, two to his legs, one to his foot. He uh, veered off into an exit lane and ended up in a funeral home parking lot. Uh, and all chaos has broken loose since. Um, a lot of new details have come out. I want to shout out uh, La Presse, La Presse, a uh, big French Canadian media outlet out in Montreal. They did a great three part series on this. There's also a bunch of court filings in relation to the guilty pleas that lay out a lot of particulars that we didn't know. Um, and a lot of those particulars have to do with the actual blow by blow of the assassination attempt, which was launched by the Hells Angels, a combination of uh, the combination of the Hells Angels of Montreal and a renegade Rizzuto mob capo uh, that was an old school, old, you know, old time loyalist that had fallen out with Leonardo Rizzuto, Francesco Chit. Del Basso, uh, most notorious bookmaker, collector in Quebec for a long time, uh, was caught on wires telling people he was going to twist him up like a pretzel. Uh, and another guy asked who he was, and he said, I'm the guy that's going to be making you drink, uh, eat all your meals through a straw uh, for the foreseeable future. So this guy was someone whose reputation really preceded him, was a bodyguard for the Rizzutos, was one of Vito Rizzuto's you know, most trusted um, earners and enforcers and had a falling out with Vito's son, Leonardo Rizzuto, when he took over the crime family in 2016 amid this massive insurgence uh, within the Rizzuto crime family, which is separate from the war they're fighting with the Hells Angels. I know it's very confusing. So let's break down some of the things that we have learned. Um, we knew that Chit Del Basso got pulled off of a plane a week after he missed, you know, you, you take a shot at the King, you better hit. Uh, he was trying to get out of town specifically on a one-way ticket to Sicily, got pulled off the plane by SQRCMP. And it looked like, it looks like based on these court filings, he did quite the debriefing um, and just laid out on the line, everything that led up to the assassination attempt without acknowledging his role in the assassination attempt, but acknowledging that he had a major feud with Leonardo Rizzuto stemming from control of Del Basso's huge sports book uh, loan sharking operation that he had given up when he had to go to prison, uh, came out in the 2000, late 2010s, early 2020s, and uh, wasn't able to get it back. He told this to to his debriefers. And I think the big takeaway here, and I kind of buried the lead in the first four minutes of this, was that according to Del Basso, Leonardo Rizzuto had a $400,000 contract on his head, on Del Basso's head. And uh, shout out to um, Paul Cherry at the Montreal Gazette, who reported this back last summer that there had been two attempts on Del Basso's life before he launched on Rizzuto. Um, and now we got a little more color with those. One was November 7th, 2022, I believe. Um, Del Basso's uh, Lexus SUV, SUV gets riddled with bullets, shot up. He knows at this point that, according to him, Rizzuto is trying to kill him. Um the shooter allegedly meets with Del Basso, the one who had been given the contract in November, and tells Del Basso, give me $500,000 and 
and I'll tell you who gave me this contract and I'll kill them for you. Um, it appears there were a series of sit downs between November and the Christmas holidays between Hells Angels, Del Basso and the Rizzutos and some type of peace or temporary peace was agreed upon. I'm told that Greg Picasso Woolley was the broker of that. Marty Robert was there. The, the King Hells Angel right now, who's was behind Chet Del Basso's play. Del Basso admitted to uh, authorities that at that point, by late 22, early 23, he had basically been kicked out of the Rizzuto mob or had extricated himself and aligned with the Hells Angels, Marty Robert and company. Um, so everything's quiet through the holidays and January and then... In February, uh, shots ring out at Del Basso's home, um, and that's that's when the wheel started to go into motion uh, for Del Basso to try to kill Rizzuto and and take control of the Rizzuto crime family for himself and the Hell's Angels. Um, March fifteenth, two thousand twenty-three, is when the hit took place. It took place in Laval again on on a highway. I guess Leo, Leonardo Rizzuto wasn't really masking his day-to-day -day routine. Del Basso hires Roche Brune and Bartholomew to lean on him and, and you know follow him for a couple of days to get an idea of where he goes and when he goes there. They find out that he spends most of his afternoons at the Rom Cafe. That's kind of his headquarters. So they decide to get him leaving the Rom Cafe and coming home. There's video surveillance of Chick Del Basso going into the car rental place with Roche Brune and purchasing or renting a Porsche SUV to be used in the hit. Uh, he eventually changes cars. Uh, firstly, he rents a, a red Porsche SUV to, for the hitters, and then he changes his mind and decides to use a black SUV. Meanwhile, Chick Del Basso leaves the country uh, and goes to Cuba, goes to Havana to establish an alibi. Um he leaves on the 12th and doesn't come back till the 20th. Rizzuto's attempted assassination is on the 15th. Uh, two days before um, Del Basso returns to Canada, Roche Brune is observed by SQ surveillance units meeting with the Hell's Angels at a restaurant in Montreal. Um, so another interesting piece to come out of this was Leonardo Rizzuto's mindset uh, after the assassination attempt. I guess he was very emotional at the hospital, um, throwing a, I don't want to say temper tantrum. I, I think that would not be becoming of Leonardo Rizzuto, but very visually agitated um, and told police that he didn't see anything, that he had blood um dripping in his eyes so he couldn't see who was shooting at him. But, um, and then the last thing I'll say is, or the two last things I'll say before we wrap it up, and this was a little longer, quick hitter than normal, um, is that it looks like Roche Brune is going to do 10 years. Bartholomew is going to do five. Roche Brune was, did three years. You know, he's a veteran of, of these mob wars in Quebec. He did three years for an attempted murder in, back in 2016 on a Rizzuto Capo named uh, Marco Pizzi, Eastside Marco. Um, and then I'll, I'm just going to quote, I'm going to end this by quoting Chet Del Basso um, when he was pulled off the plane and they said to him, you know, why are you leaving town? What, what's going on? And, and, and he said, do you think I have any choice? Um, he, he knew where the cars lay here. He was reading the tea leaves. He knew he was a dead man walking and eventually he would be killed himself in June of 2023. Um, leaving a meeting with Marty Robert and the Hells Angels, uh, Kevin Rochebrun, as well as Marty Robert, uh, and, and a lot of other Hells Angels attended that funeral. So it's getting hotter every day out there. We got some more details about how all this thing popped off. So, Keep checking back at the OG as well as Gangster Report, our companion web magazine, for all the latest breaking news up in Canada as well as organized crime going around North America. Please like, subscribe, share, 
we love bringing you the the latest breaking news and and we're going to keep doing it scott bernstein og pod out Thank you.